So this is the third out of the, I don't know, maybe five videos total because um, we got the install videos to do. But <clears throat> this is at least the third video on getting the dry sum oil pan out of the car with the engine in the car, which um, I don't believe, again, there's a single video on YouTube on how to do that. And uh, probably for good reasons, because it's a pain in the butt for most people. Um, but here's, here's the trick. Here, I'm going to walk you through how to get the oil pan out um, <clears throat> with minimal steps. Um, I mean, again, it, I, I've walked you through the first uh, couple videos where basically we had to, um, you know, uh, drop the suspension down. So the, the upper A-arms come off. The shock comes off. Make sure you undo the harnesses for the top of the shocks. If um, <clears throat> if you you know you have the magnetospherical <coughs> shocks or whatever you call that um, magnetic shocks for short, <clears throat> but the harness is not very long, so you can break that at the top. So undo that under the hood. Um, <clears throat> you can basically have your A arms just lay down. Um, there are a couple very um, you know. <coughs> uh, sensors here, especially, um, you know, the uh, shock uh, uh, position alignment or sensor. So those are very, uh, you just be careful. Don't pull down on these A-arms. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, the trick, uh, not really a trick, it's just tedious work, um, is you need to drop both sides of the, the control arms down, undoing the upper part. Not a big deal. Honestly, it's not difficult. Don't be scared with that. Um, <clears throat> then you need to remove the transverse leaf spring, which goes right across here. And the reason is because it blocks the front bolts. Um, if you come around, you'll see right here, it blocks. It runs right here, and it blocks these front oil pan bolts. And it's just, you know, why fool with it with little wrenches? If you want to do that, fine. But personally, I just would remove the transverse leaf spring. And the way you do that <clears throat> is you lower both of these. Like I said, you undo the top and then you basically have somebody help you and you slide it out that way and it'll drop down here and you can slip it right out. Um, and that's the transverse leaf spring right there. You can see where that came out. So next, uh, what you wanna do, um, if you come around the front um, and look up in here, you know, I took off the ABS bracket I took one bolt out of the steering rack here. Um, you don't really need to do that. I'm removing and replacing the steering rack. Um, but if you ever want to, well, number one, you've got to remove the crank pulley and the accessory pulley to get the oil pan off. And that's because if you, if you bring the camera right up under here, you see that lip, this lip right here? That lip basically rolls right up inside the accessory pulley. So you can't, you can't drop it down. And because the oil pump drops down low, you can't wiggle it. There's nothing you can do. So save yourself the trouble of trying to battle with that and just, you know, take this one bolt out here for the steering rack, take um, one bolt here for the, the, the sway bar, and then the one bolt that goes uh, vertical up here for the sway bar. That'll move, that allows the sway bar to come out and then the, Steering rack, you can take a pry bar and just pry it this end back about two or three inches. Usually you can just loosen that side of the steering rack. You don't need to take that bolt out, but again, I'm, I'm going to replace the whole rack. <clears throat> and that'll be in the next video. So when you take, when you can move this steering rack forward, it makes it super easy to get the crank pulley off. So get the crank pulley off, take the accessory pulley off. Um... Again, that's pretty straightforward. The belt's easy to put on. I always say when you put on the accessory belt, don't use the tensioner and all that to um, <clears throat> to try and to fool with the tensioner to get the belt on. Take the two bolts out of the alternator and just twist the alternator a little bit and the belt will pop right off the alternator. And that's the easiest way by far to get the accessory belt off. I've done it, I don't know, maybe a dozen times already and believe me, that's the easiest way. <clears throat> and when you reverse that, that step, you put the belt on, uh, have the alternator crank sideways, put the belt on the alternator pulley, and then take a pry bar and just pry the alternator back into uh, the lower bolt, 
run a lower bolt through, take the pry bar, push the alternator up, and run the upper bolt through. Um, it's actually quite simple. So <clears throat> anyway, getting the crank pulley off, um, that gets us about halfway there. Um, unfortunately, just taking these two engine mount bolts, you have two on each side. Um, your engine mounts are on the top side, and these bolts come down and they have a nut on each one. And there's four. There's two per side. Unfortunately, if you take the jack, and this is also important, if you jack up on the bell housing where the thick material is, you never want to jack on the thin material. I've already said that before. You want to jack on the thick material. Um, the problem is the jack is in the way. So you can't take the oil pan back because it hits the jack. So if you get the camera and you look up in there, I have the jack setting on the thick part right where the bolts and the flange connects to the bell housing. So that's very key. And then you can jack up the motor um, about a half, maybe three quarter of an inch. You don't want to jack this up with a lot of force because you don't want to uh, get the, the torque tube and all that out of alignment because that's bad. You'll have crank wobble. Uh, you'll ruin a motor really fast. So just jack up the motor just enough, you know, maybe half an inch, something like that. You'll see the bolts rise. If you come over here, this is how you can tell right right here and the reason why you're seeing about an inch here is because the final step which is how you get this oil pan out believe it or not even with the motor jacked up you still can't get the oil pan out it catches on the lip of the uh <clears throat> of the oil pump there's a lip and i don't know why gm did that it is really frustrating um but again it catches on that lip and you can't get it out. You can't get the angle. You, you got to drop it down and then get the angle right. <clears throat> so the last step is getting a good torque wrench, 100 foot-pounds of uh, air pressure, 110, get you a nice big torque wrench, and you have four bolts for the subframe. So make sure you got, you know, something under the subframe if you're first time because you damn sure don't want this whole thing to just fall out on you because that's bad. That's holding up the engine. Um, of course, the engine is connected to the bell housing torque tube, so it won't fall out, but you can bend stuff. You, you don't want to drop down the subframe more than you need. So you want to do about a half inch, so half inch or so on the subframe. All four, you want to you drop those four bolts in crisscross patterns, technically speaking, is how the right way to do it. So it drops down equal, and you don't want to do two inches on one side and then go do two, do a, you know, a, I don't know, maybe a half inch to a half inch, you know, alternate in a sequence. So the subframe comes down nice and slow. You can check all of your lines, make sure you're not binding anything. Um, but again, the engine, the entire suspension assembly, everything is all on the subframe. <clears throat> so you don't have to really worry about these lines being stretched anymore because it comes down as one unit. So anyway, I'm gonna put the light down. And I'm going to show you, uh, once you have the subframe down, um, now the oil pan, you just got to work it a little bit, not much. And bam, there's your, there's your oil pan out of a dry slump motor without removing the engine. So uh, if I started from scratch, knowing exactly what I knew, you know, knew to do now, I could probably get this oil pan out in about three to four hours, something like that. Um, now that I really went through and kind of figured out the little gotchas. But if you come here, um, let's put this on the bench, which I really don't have a lot of room, but we put it on the bench. Right here, you can see your oil pump. Um, that's where, again, you always want to replace this gasket. Um, goes like that, right? And uh, <clears throat> that is how your oil pump essentially mates to uh, your oil pressure lines, which come out the side, right? Um, so that's your high and low flow and your, your uh, evacuation. So all of that, that's your windage tray. You wanna be careful with stroker motors that you have your windage tray, uh, your stroker cranks don't hit, just mentioning that while I have it out. <clears throat> um, another tip, <clears throat> um, this GM sealant, the best way me and Andrea have uh, tackled this, um, 
is use like a plastic scraper. Don't use anything because this is aluminum, right? You don't really want to mark up this the, this face of of um, the oil pan right where it seals. So get an aluminum scraper. This stuff comes off. It's not that bad. So just get the majority of it off and then use gasket remover. Um, I think I have some right here. So Permatex gasket remover. Um, and it comes with a brush. So if you take this top off, you can see it's got a brush on there. And all you do is just brush it, let it sit, brush it, let it sit, and then that stuff will wipe right off. So that's the best way to get that gasket material off. Um, so next, I just want to show real quick to uh, end the video, uh, show you guys the internals of this Texas Speed 416. So about 3,000 miles or so on this. And uh, you can see, I mean, everything, all the ARP uh, studs, um, I mean, the main cap studs, the uh, rod studs, everything in there looks really good. And what you want to look for when you're looking up in here, um, especially right here where the where uh, your main, your thrust bearing, um, that's, that keeps your side-to-side -side movement of your crank, right? So that's where most of your stress is at. You want to look for heat marks, right, on your rods. Anywhere on the crank, like on the bottom of the crank, anywhere in here or on the rods is where you want to look near the bearings, where the bearings are at, right? So your bearing caps are right in there. Uh, your bearing caps, of course, in your rods. But look, look for heat marks, like look for discoloration. Um, you'll see it turning like a blue, like a light blue. It'll be kind of a white to a light blue, and you'll see it. You'll see it right on the crank surface um, and even on the rods if the rod bearings go. So there's not a bit of discoloration. If I look up in there, I can see the Texas Speed logo right up on the piston, if you see that. Um, so everything looks great. Um, I can see the rod, I mean the, uh, the camshaft up in there, the piston squirters. Nothing is uh, hitting, binding, so they did a good job with the stroker getting the piston squirters not to hit. I know people have problems with that with the piston skirts coming down a little low and hitting the squirters, the, those squirters have to be modified on a stroker crank. So, um, so again, uh, everything looks to be in really good shape. So all we need to do uh, is just basically clean up the surface, um, scrape it, clean it, get it really clean. And, uh, and then what we do, <clears throat> You want to use this uh, GM. You, you don't want to go with this aftermarket kind of engine sealant. Go with the AC Delco. It's uh, 10, 2010, or 1237-8521. 1237-8521. So that is what you want because it's uh, <clears throat> resistant to any kind of oils or any of that material. And it, of course, uh, is what GM recommends, and that's that's what everybody uses on that oil pan. So, um, if you look up in here, the last thing I'll show you <coughs> before we uh, end the video is um, I didn't have to remove the timing cover. You can see the billet. Um, I've got an LME billet timing cover, which uh, basically is a VVT delete built into it, um, and it's super light. It's a very nice piece, actually, um, but. It comes with an O-ring, uh, but I'm not much of an O-ring sort of fan, uh, so I, I still use GM sealing on that. Um, I don't trust that little O-ring personally. So, um, but again, you can see everything looks nice. Nothing's bent, discolored. Oil pump um, looks fine. Um, it's, I'm looking at the timing chain up in there. No discoloration. Uh, all, all the lines are connected right. I mean, you can see everything looks to be in good shape. So um, I think the motor is perfectly healthy, which is good. Um, I'm not exactly sure why I was uh, having some low oil pressure issues, but um, uh, the new setup I am going to show you in the future videos because I've already got the parts order. They'll be here next week. As I'm running the adapter <clears throat> here on the in and out uh, of uh, the oil, uh, basically the oil cooler lines. And I'm dumping, <clears throat> I'm dumping the factory oil cooler. Well, so it's a water to oil cooler. And uh, there's a union that connects these two lines. If you see these two water lines here, one comes from the block 
and this one goes to the radiator. Um, you don't want to lose that, so I'm going to connect that via union. And <clears throat> so now what that will do is I'll have a um, basically a, a 12, it's about a 12 by 12 inch and 8 inch thick cooler core that's going to go up in the front fender with a thermostat on the fan. And then there's a 200 degree thermostat built in for the oil flow. So the oil won't even flow till it hits 200 degrees. <clears throat> and then I'll have dedicated um, race flux lines with, with heat shielding. That will run up the side of the motor. And what that will do is now that I have a pro charger on, I, I don't have coolant cooling the uh, positive displacement blower, which heats the coolant and that causes overheating. So I eliminated that. I'm running a pro charger air to air. And now that I eliminated the, uh, the water to oil cooler, which also runs by the headers, mind you, which is not good. Um, <clears throat> now that I eliminated the, the, the coolant, uh, the water to oil cooler, uh, my engine will be 100% dedicated radiator and the, the 17 plus models extra heat exchanger, all totally dedicated cooling the motor. It won't be cooling the PD blower and it won't be cooling the oil. So my coolant temp should stay rock solid on the track. Uh, and that's what I do. I track this. So I really am concerned about coolant temps and oil temps. So having a dedicated oil cooler um, is going to help a lot, especially on a, you know, a, a motor this expensive. So I want to make sure that everything is, <clears throat> you know, is, is just operating efficiently. These aren't show parts, right? You're not even going to see it. Nobody's even going to know that you have you know, $1,500 worth of oil cooler set up under your car, but your engine will thank you. So um, anyway, uh, we're going to push the subframe back up. I'm going to basically cover um, this because we're stopping for the day and we'll work back on this Saturday. So I'll have another video for you Saturday. We'll probably clean up the oil pan, um, go ahead and get the sealant on it and get that done. And then we'll get the steering rack <coughs> um, done next. Um, and then following that, I've got to bleed the brakes and I'll show you how to do that. I've got a, a brake, a nice brake bleeder system that I got off Amazon that I think is affordable and it should be nice uh, and work well. So anyway, um, I'm going to end the video here. And uh, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, feel free to, to comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, about any kind of tricks or questions or whatever I need to do to get the oil pan out or what, you know, any kind of steps in between. Um, also the steering rack, that's another hard one that a lot of people, they're just saying anything out on, on YouTube on that. So I want to make sure that I get content out on YouTube. That's pretty rare. I mean, I don't give a, too much about race videos and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I really want to get videos out there that help people. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, be sure to subscribe. Um, I'm getting a few, few more subscribers. So, um, hopefully you guys can, uh, take the time to subscribe and, uh, you know, hit the notification button. So when I post a new video, you'll be notified. Um, so thank you for watching.